If you've ever wondered why you can understand your trauma perfectly, but still get triggered, why you can explain exactly what happened to you, but your body still freezes up, or why years of talking about it hasn't stopped the panic attacks, I'm about to explain the neuroscience that nobody talks about. Your trauma doesn't live where you think it does, and that's why most approaches don't create permanent change. Today, I'm going to show you exactly where trauma gets stored in your nervous system and why your body keeps the score even when your mind has moved on. Let's talk about your three brains. Yes, you have three brains, and they don't talk to each other the way you think they do. First, you've got your neocortex. That's your human brain, your thinking brain. This is where therapy happens. This is where understanding lives. This is where all your insights and breakthroughs occur. Then you've got your limbic system, your mammalian brain. This is where emotions live, fear, anger, attachment. This is about 100 million years older than your thinking brain. But here's what changes everything. You have a third brain, your brainstem, your reptilian brain. This is 500 million years old. It controls your survival responses. Fight, flight, freeze, fawn. And here's the kicker. It doesn't understand language. It doesn't care about your insights. It only speaks one language, body sensations. When trauma happens, especially developmental trauma or repeated trauma, it gets encoded in your brainstem and your body, not in your thinking brain. This is why you can talk about your trauma for years and still have the same physical responses. You're having a conversation in English with a part of your brain that only speaks body language. Think about it. When you get triggered, what happens first? Do you think I'm unsafe or does your body react first? Your heart races, your breathing changes, your muscles tense. The body response happens in milliseconds. The thought comes after. Your autonomic nervous system has two branches, sympathetic and parasympathetic. But it's not as simple as fight or flight versus rest and digest. Let me blow your mind with something called the polyvagal theory. Your vagus nerve, the longest nerve in your body, has two branches. The ventral vagus is your social engagement system. When this is online, you feel safe, connected, creative. You can make eye contact. Your voice has melody. Your face is expressive. But when you detect threat, you drop into sympathetic activation, fight or flight. Your body mobilizes adrenaline, cortisol, muscle tension. This is actually adaptive. It's meant to save your life. Here's where it gets interesting. If fight or flight won't work, if you can't fight back or run away, you drop into dorsal vagal shutdown, freeze, disassociation, numbness. Your body is playing dead because that's the last survival strategy. People with trauma get stuck cycling between these states. They're either hypervigilant in sympathetic arousal or collapsed in dorsal vagal shutdown. They can't access that ventral vagal state of safety and connection. Their nervous system has forgotten what safety feels like at the biological level. And here's what nobody tells you. Your nervous system makes this decision in three milliseconds. Three milliseconds. Your conscious mind processes information at about 40 milliseconds. So your trauma response is literally faster than thought. Your body stores trauma as what we call implicit memory or somatic memory. It's not like regular memory. You might not even remember what happened, but your body does. Let me give you an example. Someone who had a car accident might rationally know they're safe driving now. Their thinking brain gets it, but every time they get behind the wheel, their hands shake, their breathing gets shallow, they start sweating. That's somatic memory. These body memories live in your fascia, your muscle patterns, your breathing habits. Trauma literally changes your posture. People with freeze responses have collapsed shoulders, shallow breathing. 
People with fight responses might have chronic jaw tension. Clenched fists, they're not even noticing. Your nervous system creates these patterns to protect you. If you learned as a kid making yourself small kept you safe, your body still does that automatically. If fighting back made things worse, your body learned to freeze instead. But here's the beautiful thing about somatic memory. It can be rewritten. Not through talking, not through understanding, but through new body experiences. Your nervous system can learn new patterns, but it has to learn them through the body, not the mind. This is called bottom-up processing. Instead of trying to think your way into feeling safe, you create safety in the body first, and the mind follows. It's the opposite of everything we've been taught about healing. Everyone has what we call a window of tolerance. That's the zone where you can handle stress without getting triggered. When you're in your window, you can think clearly, stay present, respond instead of react. Trauma shrinks your window. Things that wouldn't bother other people send you into hyperarousal, anxiety, panic, rage, or they drop you into hypoarousal, numbness, disconnection, depression. Your window gets so narrow that almost anything can trigger you. Here's the neuroscience. When you're triggered, your amygdala, your brain's smoke detector, hijacks your whole system. It shuts down your prefrontal cortex. That's why you can't think straight when triggered. Your brain literally goes offline. But through specific somatic exercises, you can actually widen your window. You teach your nervous system that activation doesn't mean danger. You show your body that it can come back to baseline. You create new neural pathways that bypass the amygdala hijack. Simple example, controlled breathing exercises where you intentionally increase your heart rate, then bring it back down. You're teaching your nervous system, activation is okay because I can return to safety. Over time, this rewires your threat detection system. So how do you actually rewire trauma responses? First, you need to work at the right level. Talk therapy works with the neocortex, but trauma lives in the brainstem and body. You need somatic interventions. Things like bilateral stimulation, moving both sides of your body in rhythm. This actually integrates the two hemispheres of your brain. This is why EMDR works. It's why walking helps anxiety. You're creating cross-lateral integration. Or take orienting exercises. Simply moving your head slowly, side to side, letting your eyes lead, tells your nervous system you're safe enough to look around. Trapped animals don't orient. Safe animals do. Tension and release exercises literally discharge trapped survival energy. When animals escape from predators, they shake. They discharge the energy. Humans are socialized not to shake, so we store that survival energy in our bodies as chronic tension. The key is titration, working with small amounts of activation at a time. You don't flood the system. You gently expand capacity. You pendulate between activation and calm, teaching your nervous system it can move between states. Look, you can understand your trauma story perfectly and still be living in a triggered body. Your body doesn't care about your insights. It cares about felt safety. And felt safety comes from somatic experience, not cognitive understanding. The good news is your nervous system is incredibly plastic. It can learn new patterns at any age. So you're not broken. You're not damaged. Your nervous system is doing exactly what it learned to do to protect you. It just needs to learn something new. If you're ready to stop managing symptoms and start rewiring your nervous system at the biological level, I've created something called the Neural Reset Protocol. It's 21 days of specific somatic exercises that create permanent change. No therapy, no medication, just biology. 
Link in my profile if you want to check it out. Remember, your trauma responses are not your fault, but your nervous system is your responsibility. And you have more power to change it than you've been told. The science proves it. Your body already knows how to heal. You just need to speak its language.